Mining Weekly Online is talking to Robert Willis, the Managing Director of Challenger Energy Limited, which is listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Challenger owns 95% of a South African company called Bundu, um, and Bundu is the applicant for an exploration right in the Karoo, uh, and in fact the first mover in the, in the Karoo Shale Basin. Bundu had, uh, uh, has applied for an area of a million acres, around about 400,000 hectares, around a well that was drilled in the late 60s by Socor. Now Socor drilled a number of wells through this area at that point in time. Um, these wells all had gas shows, but this particular well um, encountered gas to the extent that it took a gas kick. They actually had to activate the blowout preventers and then they flowed gas to surface for 24 hours. Now this was a vertical well, it wasn't fracture stimulated, so this is a pretty unusual and, and very exciting phenomenon and this is the reason that Bundu put in an application around that, that, that well site for, as I say, a million acres. Um, following that, Shell came in and applied for a much, much larger area and so did another company called Falcon. Um, Falcon has subsequently announced a deal with Chevron so we now find ourselves in the middle of what uh, uh, we all hope and the US government also seems to be indicating is a potential world-class shale gas basin and that is validated by some of the world's biggest household name super majors who've uh, all come in around us uh, but we were the first to go in and apply. The situation right now as, as you may be aware is that all of the companies have applied for exploration rights. And none of those have yet been granted, and so there is not at the current time, until those are granted, um, an ability to actually go on site and commence um, you know, on-the-ground exploration activities. On the other hand, um, you know, there's been a lot of encouraging moves, um, and a lot of this has been covered in the press, um, a lot of positive statements and announcements from, from government and ruling party around the desire to move forward with this. Um, the government has issued the technical regulations that were long awaited um, in October last year and put those out to consultation with the industry and these are the technical regulations. They cover all of the oil and gas industry but I think they're particularly meant to, meant, meant to focus on, on shale. So when will, when will these rights be granted? Well, we'll wait and see but there's some very encouraging uh, signs here and I think there is an expectation that this may be substantially progressed prior to the upcoming elections. Once those rights have been granted, at that point then the companies will, will be able to go and uh, start physical exploration. The US EIA basically has done a global ranking of shale gas basins. They've ranked this currently number eight in the world with a hypothetical technically recoverable resource of something like 370 trillion cubic feet. If the resource space proves up to be anything like the scale that, that people are thinking, that that must be on the list of, of potential markets for the gas. But it certainly won't be the only one. We have, a, we have an investor base and we have shareholders in, in Australia who clearly share the excitement in this. Environmentally, a lot of the people living in the Karoo are mm. concerned. The government has really taken its time to put together a set of technical regulations for this because they recognise that this is a new activity in South Africa. And they've put together a fairly comprehensive set of technical regulations that covers a wide range of areas. We're committed to make sure that we will meet or exceed the South African standards and we will, we will use international best practice. If you think about the thousands upon thousands of wells that have been successfully drilled and put on production, particularly in the United States of America, um, we have no doubt that this can be done safely provided the right safeguards are put in place and I, my understanding is that South Africa has some of the most stringent environmental law in, in the world. If this exploration program is successful and if it leads to a development, this will be a business that will be around for decades to come.